<laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Inside Star Citizen. Uh, I believe we're on episode four. We're going to watch it here with the crew. Like, where's everybody's chat at? Hold on a second. There we go. Boom. Whoa. Everybody's been talking. We've been talking Game of Thrones. Apologies. We know that we're off topic right now for the video, but we will shortly get into it. Let's start the video and watch now. Let me know how volume is, guys. Turn it up just a touch. They say a ship is more than the sum of its parts. And part of the fun of spaceships is pitting yours against others in the persisting universe. Now, we all know the joy of utterly destroying your opponents in a spirited spectacle of space. But sometimes, you'd rather disable them and leave your options open, like maybe searching through those ships' parts. And that's exactly what Matthew and Patrick are working on right now, preparing ships for the subsystem targeting of components. Let's check in with them and see where they're at. We've been hoping up. I like to keep the chat. I had to resize the chat because it literally blocked the whole screen. So that for the first part of this uh, review, I'm just saying apologies about the chat. <laughs> I like to see what people have to say. I think it's important because when people are talking about like the things that are happening here, I want to make sure it's all in, like it's all in, so that everybody can see what is going on here. The, okay. The IFCS team with um, the thruster items, um, helping them with the damage. Um, there's about 120 thrusters oh. that you've been going through. Uh, yeah, so far so good. So the first thing I did was actually I went through and I did all the individual thrusters. So now every single thruster item, which has its own I have that ship. Has its own I proxy. love it. Which so, is collision. Right? Yeah, that okay. is a collision mesh, which means that's what dictates that damage happens to the asset. Okay. Uh, after I finished all the thrusters, I had to go through every... Okay, I'm pausing it here. They're doing damage. This is cool. Like on ships, like we all wanted to board ships. We all wanted to be pirates. Currently, how we're fighting in space right now is we're like hitting these ships and they just they blow up. So what they're talking about here is uh, procedural damage, which is awesome. I'm already liking this episode like we're right into it. And they're already talking about something that's going to make me be able to be more of a pirate. And I'm digging it. So hopefully they're going to talk about how if you disable thrusters, you're able to stop the momentum of the ship, that you can board ships, that you can steal ships. Yar! I'm really excited now. That's good. That's good. Every ship. And then uh, each ship needed to be accessible. So like, for mm -hmm. example... Like over here we see there's a car <laughs> cavity now where yeah. the thruster sits. <laughs> So exactly. that way you can strike <laughs> you it directly. Funny. Yeah, so you can see that over here on the prospector. That was actually flat now, but you can go in and you can actually shoot it. Oh. Individually, get and right in, in You know, in the deep prospectors are going to be picked on so bad, by the way. Like, a lot of industrial ships are going to be targeted for the booty. Like, industrial ships equal booty. So it's interesting they're using this as an example because it's one of the more perfect ships to actually loot. So I, I, I it's cool. Like, you can actually see the damage being done to the armor right there but it's interesting that they're using a pistol i'm not quite sure but i don't think the pistol should do that much damage to the ship i just think this is for display purposes only like you know the actual damage uh that, that a pistol should do shouldn't do like that much like a blaster from a ship maybe but like the pistol maybe they're just using it to show us the, the procedural damage debug here we see these green bars the health is actually going down as you shoot Basically, when we're shooting the thing, these little health bars go down, which are also represented on the mesh. So each individual thruster can show me where it is, how much health it has, and I can see the damage transfer. Oh, yeah. That into oh, that's others. that's kind of cool. That's similar how players will see uh, in their MFD. <laughs> they'll Damon. see the, the thruster glow from like yellow and then to red as it's like about to be destroyed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And mains, for example, have some VFX that happen as they slowly degrade. They take some damage. They emit the more. The back. Particles. Mains, so the aft thruster really set up now. No, taking right now, damage like, you was have to pretty shoot cool. Into these recesses to actually strike the thruster, right? Correct. Oh. But like in the future, we'll be able to shoot through the hull with our pierceability tech, and then strike uh, the thruster uh, that's under the hull. When you're attacking someone. Oh, wow, man. They're talking about different areas that you can hit causes different types of damage and different type of tech that like he said something about tactical. I'm not quite sure if he's just talking about like aiming like ADS, like aim down sights into the actual booster or thruster, or if he's talking about some type of like weaponry tech that actually affects thruster differently than like, say, a normal uh, laser blast or projectiles. I don't know. I don't know. Tactical can target those weak spots, says Red. 
then they'll slowly degrade their performance, and that's kind of the end result, is to create more of like a dynamic mm -hmm. gameplay flow. Yeah. And you could see in this mesh in particular, this was actually capped, so I had to go in and sort of chisel the hole back, come in, extrude these out, that way you can shoot each thruster individually. Same thing goes for the rest of the ships down the line. I'm really digging yeah. this. So is that good? Is that, is that pretty much what you wanted? You all set? Yeah. All right. <laughs> can I get back to work now? Can, can, can I actually get back to work now? Sure. Yeah, we got things to do. Yeah. I got a lot of thrusters to do here. A lot of proxies to model. <laughs> the public roadmap is your tool to see what features are in active development and heading your way each quarter. But oftentimes... Oh, shit. Look at what Damon says. Damon's saying, you'll be able to potentially pierce the hull from the front and hit a rear thruster with weapons that pierce, like projectiles. Ooh, that just made me feel all types of good right there. Like, I'm, just, I'm digging that. I'm digging it. Flash Thank you, Damon. Thank you for that clarification. Looking at you, game object extensions conversion, or at least I would be if you had a visual component to look at. With that in mind, we asked Jens and Gordon to sit down and talk with us a little bit about what client to server actor networking rework me means. <laughs> what? I, 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 Are they going to talk about networking? Let's find out more. The first step for this was the server to client uh, actor network and rework. So this is wait, are they actually talking the about uh, NB server server client? Yeah, the client server. So this is changing how the client talks to the server. When we released Dawn okay, Marine, they're actually going to start talking about uh, network bind calling and meshing. I think here, this is like the biggest hurdle for Star Citizen. One thing we found is uh, we really wanted to improve. Was I hate that. It, like every once in a while, I get that. Or improve the PvP experience. Currently we're fully client authoritative, um, so that means when I press forward on my machine, um, my actor runs forward two meters, he works out his new position and that position sent up to server, which is um, fine, that's an okay way to do the, the networking, and um, we're yeah. switching to being server authoritative. Means, yeah, essentially on the server you're just teleporting around. Instead of everyone else seeing you teleport around, yeah. it's the other way around, so it's now you that's teleporting around. So your experience is degraded rather than every other player in the server having their experience degraded. We're yeah. just about finished client to server, the next one server to client, improving the communication down the way. Um, so at the moment, for instance, we've got an artificial quarter of a second rewind time injected into the system um, to try and smooth everything out. Um, the idea is to reduce that significantly down to maybe a frame or two. So when I'm hunting you in Star Marine, where I see you are is where you are. When <laughs> you're no it. longer bunny hopping around. When you're trying to and hunt me. When you turn on your cheese, the server's going to punish you. When you're trying to hunt me in Star Marine, um, <laughs> yes, it will be a much better experience for you. You'll be able to shoot me much easier. Yes. You guys. Okay, this is a major hurdle here. So, what do you think? Well, I mean, it's an important thing that we need to be talking about it. Of course, we've been screaming for it. You know, they're putting it in here, but that wasn't enough, man. Like, I need a lot more detail than what they just put. They have any more detail? Hold on a second. It has no visuals, though. I wish the episode had more of a punch to it. A punch? Like, what? What do you mean? Oh, it would have been really cool to do a sprint report this episode, but we didn't We didn't get it in in time. There's a camera right there. Hmm? There's a camera. <laughs> this whole time, there's been a camera right there. You mean do a sprint report right now that was unplanned and not in the original hosting? Why not? I mean, let's do it. Heck, it's our show. Here's your sprint report. The EU gameplay feature team continues their sprint on clustered harvestables, shown here with some test assets Wait provided a second. by the art teams. Okay, I'm a little salty right there because they didn't get into enough detail. Like, I'm happy that they're, uh, the, I, okay, so I'm happy that SIG is saying, hey, we're working on it but I don't feel like they put enough detail on that. Like I, I could have actually done like a 30 minute episode right there, just listening to the actual details of what they're working on in terms of like improving server to client information, like importance between like the communication between the two, because I'm just like super geeky like that. And I think that's like one of the major hurdles. They really glossed over that. They really glossed over that. So I'm going to give them a strike for that one. That was such a cock tease. I'm just saying. That was that wasn't right what they just did right there. That was so bad. Now I'm going to I'm going to come back to that. Like seriously, what are they talking about now? Harvestable food? Okay. I'm switching gears. I'm switching gears. I'm breathing. I'm breathing. <laughs> Let's watch this and see what they have to say about harvestables, which we talked about. 
which we were talking about years ago with survival mechanics. I don't know if they're actually going to be introducing a little bit of survival mechanics into the game. Should be interesting to see how that's going to go as the game develops. Everybody's dead set that it's not going to be like the commando survival mechanics in the game, but I'm not quite sure as this game continues to to uh, move forward here. Coca Harvest confirmed <laughs> this team. The new tech on display here is the ability to spawn clusters of harvestable entities at varying degrees of density and distance from one another. And this tech can potentially be applied to additional features like surface side mineable entities and even asteroids in space. Now it'll be a while before you see this tech in the game, but this is an important milestone that lays the groundwork for future development. Now a couple weeks ago in the RSI weekly newsletter, you may have noticed this image of a new helmet with hologram imaging. God, they're going so fast over this. I, okay, I mean, they're going too fast over this type of things. Maybe they'll get into more detail uh, in future episodes, but man, like I feel like they could talk much more about like harvestable foods, man. Like imagine, you know, like we were talking a lot about like different types of like uh, uh, jobs in the game, like a, like a farmer, for instance, like growing it. How viable is it to grow it? Because you would need an economy that would need it. There would have to be a demand for it, whether it be like the algorithm that the NPCs inject into it and just say, hey, we need 50 oranges or whether it actually has like a use for gameplay, like on a PVP level where you're getting types of energy or, you know, that type of thing. Uh, there would be much more demand for it. So there would be more need to be a farmer to grow the harvestables. Those are types of things that I like to talk about. Whew. Imagine playing Star Citizen as a farming sim and nothing else. Yeah, no, I couldn't just do that. What's up, Neri? Neri, it is so good to see you. It is so good to see you. Play a 300 million game and just farm the entire time. You guys are cracking me up. <laughs> like, and then the gladiator comes over and just like strafes the hell out of the farm. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I am streaming there. I'm back. This year. It's part of an initiative we're taking to revamp the subscriber program in general, starting with unique decorative items that you won't be able to find anywhere else. Also slated for quarter three is this Centurion Yeah, F the Endeavor's code. such a, like, of you that have cool been asking, concept ship. Both will be completely wearable by players. Farm some space. The U.S. vehicle team is <laughs> hey, working Sean, on materials good to see, development bro. for the Banu Defender Ooh. in a follow-up to our segment Ooh. a couple weeks ago. They didn't skin it, though. Is that just, like, the basic great concept right there? That's the Defender. Like, that's an alien Banu ship right there. That is nice. That's the Defender, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. What you're seeing here is I want to see some cool skin. Version of the yeah, untextured. The team explores a variety of oh, alien wow, that's cool. That have to work in a multitude of environments. It makes it look in very alien. Situation. I like those textures. Good Finally, skins. The environment art team is continuing their work. Man, the detail is off the chain. That will make up much of Microtech's buildings and interiors, referred to internally as the high tech. It's looking sexy, set. ladies and gentlemen. The game's officially starting to look very. What is that in there? Like. What is and, that? Uh, um, what is that? You know, these these trains, these trains might be placeholders. <laughs> that was a giant burrito. What the fuck? Where was that? That's a hot dog. <laughs> Spaceships come in all shapes and sizes, from the tiny Argo MPUV to the massive. That's Aegis hilarious. <laughs> I kind of like that they're injecting some type of humor into it at least. What the hell was that? luxury ship is being worked on by multiple team members ahead of its intended release in Alpha 3.6. Right, Full? Hey, Full Trim, good to see you, buddy. Some of the interior areas that he's been I know, right, Dean? Let's take a look. Hilarious. Uh, Damon says, I can see Endeavor being used to grow rare med uh, medicinal plants. Let me pause for a second. Good, good conversation here. I can see the Endeavor being used to grow rare medicinal plants and illicit ones, but now growing potatoes in a multi-billion. <laughs> Going back to the farming we were talking about. That's hilarious, Damon. <laughs> Final art phase, um, which means we've... Oh my gosh, we're getting the tour here of the, the 890. Been well established and we've worked out all our core styling and we're just adding all the oh and tell me about it dash the lighting all the bells and whistles that pull it together now not everything's in there at final art it happened to me too what we it have happened here to me too. is the fire area that leads you into the social hub of the ship and i don't this know if it is i don't know entertaining so as we go through you've obviously got your toilets 
Got your bar area. Like the bathrooms are really just cosmetic. Like I get it because there has to be bathrooms on ships. But like what if there was some type of mechanic that actually you had to go to the bathroom? I, I remember talks like older talks from years ago where they said that like NPCs will react to you differently based upon if you have gone to the bathroom or not. I think that's like a little too to the extreme. But like, hey. Like, it, it would make a little bit more sense to have the bathrooms in the ships, you know? <laughs> As you'll notice here, we've got a little side room, and this is your service lift that the crew who look after the guests <laughs> have used to come and bring you your drinks and your food. Well, you'll oh, that, that hub right there is really cool with all the... Is there, are those screens on the outside? The rest of the ship, and this is intentional to make you feel more relaxed. This is him. We were talking about how cool it would be as if they could, like, all hook up and, like, have, like... <clears throat> actual video being shot within the game that can be fed out and fed to like different screens receiving like channels within the game which would be like completely crazy part from feedback from the 600 community felt it was a little wasteful with the space it used the styling it's a bit more fancy because it's a, a luxury ship after all rather than an exploration vessel like the 600 is so that's the bar area, and we go yeah, Dean. to the dining area. We did a little piece on that, a video about that a uh, year or this so ago. This room ended up being a little larger than we first planned, and that's because obviously it's a right, ship dash. with decks and changes. I've oh my God, that is, here. okay, that's baller. That is baller. There is a pool. There is a, you know what movie that reminds me of? What the hell was that movie? Oh, Jesus, with the dude that from the Guardians of the Galaxy and the one from Hunger Games. That's what that that actually reminds me of. I can't remember what the hell was the name of that. Passengers. Yes. Thank you, Dean. Yeah. Thank you. Actually, I was thank showing you. this to a backer. <laughs> that was a good movie. actually part of an 890 club, and oh, I can use that to bring around the 890. <laughs> and we can discuss our plan for things, plan for get-togethers. Basically, that's what this ship is all about i'm gonna play some poker with you guys ship. we should we should buy that ship and like when we're, we're playing it we'll just play some poker in there fun. you can use it for different things but that's essentially what it's about party ship yo so yeah that's a pimp week? ship we learned that's that a pimp we're ship. another step closer to the greater gameplay opportunities provided by disabling ships instead of blowing them up Performance improvements are made in a variety of I like of that. Going back to the damage, like, I really like that, that they're focusing on actual damage, uh, procedural damage, so that you can board ships. I think that's really important. So that was cool. The networking that they glossed over completely, I mean, it's nice that they mentioned it, but they really need to actually go into much more detail. I hope they put something on Spectrum to that effect. I've not seen anything. Maybe they have. Uh, but they need to go into a lot more detail on what they're doing to actually improve NBC and server meshing. They really do. Um, <clears throat> features that add to the overall whole. And the 890 jump is big enough to fill 890 segments. And we're just going to drag this thing out because we still have a lot of shows to fill every quarter. To our subscribers, we'll see some of you tomorrow for our live studio audience edition of Star Citizen Live. And to everyone else out there in Backerland, God, they're going to end it already. They need to be much longer. Fool says, um, well, wait, Dash says, see baller swimming pool and hot tubs, perks against RPG elements of illness or character health bonus. Yeah, I would like to see something to that effect, Dash. Fool Trim says, I have never looked at this game. What's the, elev uh, the elevator pitch for the game? Dude, uh there's a there's a youtuber and i can't think of his name right now and he talks about the the like the elevator uh in the in the 890 jump and it's a really funny video god i wish i could like reference for that and find that for you You're go, you would die laughing fultrum colleen is back what is going on colleen it's so good to see you school's going to be ending for you as well so it's good to see you colleen guys and girls thank you so much for showing up here let's finish this up we'll see you next week yeah, there we go. That's that's another episode down. We did the review here. I'm so happy you guys showed up. I'm probably going to be streaming more next week. Might play a little bit more Star Citizen. Thanks for watching for the latest and greatest. I sound like I, I hate it because I start to sound like Chris there. <laughs> but thank you everybody for showing up here. I love you guys. You guys are family to me. Mom has gotten good news yesterday. Maybe I'll do a separate video for my patrons on that because my patrons helped me get through very rough times. Everybody who's pledged and donated, thank you so much. It helped me with gas to drive up and down and take her to Cleveland. 
and uh, help with food for the kids. I super appreciate you. Uh, appreciate you. I will be having a giveaway soon. We're going to do a fifty dollars Steam giveaway coming up in June, and uh, we're just we're getting back on track here. So thanks everybody. I have so much to say to you guys, but I have to get going today. It was great doing another Inside Star Citizen review, and I I honestly guys. I love you. I love every single one of you guys. Thanks for showing up here. You guys are my family. And uh, I will see you on the next vid. <laughs>